2017 Citroen C3 PureTech 110 Flare UK Review From 10,265 pounds 7 point Third generation Super Mini doesn't quite match style with equal substance although its 1.2 turbo petrol engine is a good one. What is it? This might reasonably be described as the half new Citroen C3. The new half will be immediately obvious, the Ford Fiesta rival has been given the most adventurous styling overhaul in its now three generations old history, bringing it up to speed with the firm's new family look as pioneered by the C4 Cactus and later taken on by the C1 City car. And, like it or not, you can't claim the car isn't now cutting a bit of an alternative dash as a Citroen should yet as the C3 has thus far singularly failed to do. The not-so-new half is what's underneath the car, which is a partly overhauled but mostly inherited version of the PF1 Super Mini platform that the PSA Group has been using as the basis of its small cars for more than a decade. Technically, then, the C3 isn't so new although there's an all-new common module platform replacement for PF1 currently in the works that will be finished in time for the car's midlife facelift. The C3S engine range is made up of 1.2 liter petrols of between 6.7 bhp and 1.08 bhp and 1.6 liter diesels of either 7.4 bhp or 9.9 bhp, all driving the front wheels via a choice of 5-speed manual, 5-speed semi-automatic or 6-speed torque converter automatic gearboxes. The car has grown by a couple of inches in length, but now measuring almost exactly 4 meters at the curb, it's still a very typical size for a Super Mini and comes in 5-door form only. Our introduction to the car came in a mid-range 81 bhp petrol variant on European roads and in left-hand drive form, now is our chance to test the car in the UK, in right-hand drive, and in range topping 108 bhp turbocharged petrol form. What's it like? More striking that pretty to look at, the C3 borrows liberally from ever so popular SUV styling language and yet not so much as to look bulky or incongruous. Plump for a top of the range flare model such as our test car and you get those cactus derived stylized air bump body side protectors, plastic wheel arch extensions and a contrasting roof floating atop blacked out pillars all of which could easily have looked ridiculous on a normal five door shopping car. And yet, to these eyes, the C3 successfully makes them constituent parts of a coherent look. The car's interior is every bit as distinctive. Flat seats with inclined bases sit you quite bent-legged at the wheel, but not uncomfortably so and there's plenty of steering column adjustment and fairly well-placed pedals. Unlike in the Cactus, the C3 gives you proper analog speedometer and rev counter dials, while most of its secondary ventilation and systems controls are consolidated onto the central 7.0 in touchscreen infotainment screen. The latter approach brings advantages and disadvantages, of course just as it has to so many current Peugeots and Citroëns. It's annoying that adjusting the car's heater temperature often takes several arm's length jabs at a touchscreen and demands more of your attention than you'd like to be diverted from the road ahead. On the flip side, the reduction in necessary switchgear leaves the fascia looking nicely decluttered although Citroen doesn't turn that advantage to the C3S benefit very effectively, providing only annoyingly small and poorly placed cup holders and little center console storage. The car's fascia doesn't feel as appealing as it looks, either, plastics are uniformly hard, rough in places and quite shiny. And accommodation levels aren't great, Rear seat space is well below PAR for the Super Mini class, while boot space is better but not brilliant. Citroen took the unusual decision, in a modern car market in which manufacturers normally only consider that firmer suspension and sportier handling can possibly represent progress, to soften the C3S suspension for this new version, and also to extend the car's suspension travel for a more loping, laid-back, old-school Citroen ride quality. The idea is worth applauding, as would be the execution had it been done with a little more skill and care. Trouble is, the new C3 only manages to make a virtue of its softness on certain roads and at certain speeds. Its ride is underdamped and poorly isolated when the asphalt turns sharp and choppy and allows too much body movement on country roads for the car to really feel at home on them. Light, 
reasonably direct steering makes the C3 an easy car in which to flit around town, where its chassis has the long wave absorbency to deal with speed bumps particularly well. But at higher speeds there's too much roll and bounce in the suspension to make the car able to deal assuredly with what a relatively testing British B-Road might throw at it. Handling is never insecure, but it feels somewhat imprecise, with over-assisted steering and slow directional responses making your sense of control a bit vague when cornering at the national speed limit. You can file the shift quality of the C3S5 speed manual gearbox under vague, too as well as baggy and overly long of throw. But the car's range-topping petrol engine is certainly impressive. It operates with a familiar hint of turbo lag at low revs, although nothing too problematic, and comes up with plenty of torque to motivate what isn't a particularly heavy super mini, hence the sub 10.0 SEC 0 to 62 miles per hour claim, which feels easily achievable. The three-cylinder motor runs a bit roughly around idle but smooths out nicely and shows off plenty of mechanical charm as it revs. Our testing suggested that a real-world fuel economy claim of better than 5.0 mpg, in mixed urban and extra urban use, would easily be achievable. Should I buy one? In upper level trim as tested, and with Citroen's range topping petrol engine, the C3 may not be the bargain you might have expected it to be. You might think you quite fancy one, but you could have a five door Mini Cooper for only a couple of hundred pounds more than this particular example, neatly summing up exactly how much you'll need to like Citroen's fresh take on urban super mini chic to actually buy one. Downgrading to a mid-spec feel model means going without the air bumps, though as well as cutting out some of the options that add color and life to the interior. Meanwhile, there can be no doubt that this turbo petrol engine is the pick of the C3 range. Those who really like the car's plucky newfound charm and who aren't discouraged by discovering that the C3 hasn't quite become a class-leading super mini overnight would be well served by waiting until the rush has abetted to open negotiations with their local dealer and driving their bargain hard. They'll end up with a car that doesn't often excel but certainly has its moments, and compensates for its shortcomings with plenty of likability. Citroen C3 PureTech 110 Flare Location Middle sex. On sale, now. Price, £15,995. Engine, 3 sills, 1,199 cubic centimeters, turbo, petrol. Power, 108 bhp at 5500 rpm. Torque, 151 pounds foot at 1500 rpm. Gearbox, 5 SPD manual. Curb weight, 1,050 kilograms. 0 to 62 miles per hour, 9.3 SEC. Top speed, 117 miles per hour. Economy, 61.4 mpg, combined. CO2 slash tax band, 103 G slash KM, 17%. Rivals, Ford Fiesta Titanium 1 Ton, Mini Cooper.